today I'm speaking about how to switch to 100% clean energy in order to address the climate change challenge. Um, so just to put things in perspective, uh, globally almost 75% of greenhouse gas emissions come from the energy sector, and this includes both the power generation sector as well as the transport sector. So if we address um, you know, three-fourths of the problem, then we're much closer to our goal of um, addressing uh, the climate change challenge. Um, so we have various solutions at hand uh, right now, and uh, we can actually make the transition if different industries and the government and uh, the people work together to achieve this. Um, so first of all, uh, the government has approved uh, renewable energy legislation. Uh, the alternative uh, and renewable energy policy was recently approved. And this provides incentives to investors and industrialists to set up the entire renewable energy supply chain in Pakistan. Um, it also aims to increase the percentage of power being generated uh, from 5% um, of renewable energy sources at present to 30% by 2030. Uh, secondly, net metering legislation is also in place and increasingly homeowners are being encouraged to um, install solar panels on their rooftops uh, so that they are actually producing their own electricity um, and in times of excess capacity you can sell the excess power back to the grid um, and actually save on your electricity bill. In some cases you can uh, recoup your costs in as little as a year. So this is definitely um, benefiting both the consumer and um, the climate change um, agenda. Uh, thirdly, utility scale wind and power plants need to be scaled up uh, right now, Pakistan has over 1,000 megawatts of wind capacity. Uh, wind power plants are relatively cheap and quick to put up. Uh, within a year to two years, you can set up a 50 megawatt power plant quite easily. Um, solar power uh, plants have been slightly slower on the uptake because uh, solar power plants require large um, land areas. Uh, but there's a lot of potential in Pakistan because the sun shines um, almost throughout the year. Um, so definitely it's an area of um, potential interest for investors and for renewable energy um, companies to scale up. Uh, finally, Pakistan also approved the electric vehicles policy last year and it aims to increase their percentage of uh, vehicles uh, running um, on electricity um, in the next few years. Um, a number of incentives have been provided to international companies as well to set up um, manufacturing uh, locally, um, especially for things like um, bikes and buses. Um, so if we are able to make that transition um, to electric vehicles in the transport sector, and this is part of a growing, uh, growing movement uh, worldwide, then this would take care of um, a significant proportion of our um, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and finally, the government really needs to invest in smart grids infrastructure. Uh, so right now our grid is um, quite outdated and, uh, you know, as you're probably aware, so, uh, solar power and wind power are intermittent renewable energy sources. Solar power is only available when the sun is shining and wind power when the wind is blowing and battery storage is still quite expensive. So we need to be able to program our grids in order to better predict when solar power will be available when wind power will be available so that we can dispatch um, these renewable intermittent sources quickly when needed and take advantage of our renewable capacity as opposed to being dependent on things like coal or natural gas. Uh, and finally, um, the government needs to really take this window of opportunity that we have right now to plan for the future. So Pakistan has tremendous hydropower capacity, um, almost 60% of our renewable energy or actually our power needs can be met through hydropower. And um, because we're in an energy surplus um, scenario right now, thanks to CPEC projects, um, if we plan um, you know, 10, 20 years ahead, we can really green our energy supply chain and make that transition to 100% clean energy going forward. And then on an individual level, um, what we can do is you know, make small changes in our lifestyle, um, use electricity during off-peak hours, so during the daytime instead of the nighttime, when it's also more expensive and uh, more um, expensive to produce and to use. Um, secondly, things like carpooling, um, you know, cut down on your transport emissions, um, use uh, public transport, or at least, um, you know, just cut down on ind individual use of cars. So this will also address your smog problem um, and overall contribute to your climate goals as well and lower your own um, transport carbon footprint. So thank you so much um, for the opportunity to, um, to present here um, to TEDx and to the LCWU platform.